Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. We are on a roll. <laughs> We're keeping you waiting. Yes. I have to get a cup of tea. Oh, nice. No, that's quite all right. I had to um, I have to find a new browser. And yeah, no, it all worked out. I'm having audio trouble with my laptop, so I've been using my phone. So ah, I see. Yeah. So, so tell me about the uh, the morning meditations and the mindfulness and why you like doing it and how that's linked to your ideal job. Ah, okay. Well, um, I like doing it because it it grounds me and it keeps me um, more aware of situations going on, say, with, with people and with myself. So it's making me more aware of why people are reacting or being the way they are and bringing it back to me and saying, okay, why, you know, it's just bringing a little bit more awareness on maybe how I'm reacting to them and they're reacting to me and the causes and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm just hoping it brings, uh, I see a lot of people just go, go, go and not paying attention to where they're going. And so I'm hoping to bring just a little bit of awareness to them about, you know, being just present and being in the moment, not letting your mind wander to 20 other things. Just be here right now okay i wasn't exactly asking about why mindfulness is a practice i was more asking why you feel you want to teach it or or bring it into the world because yeah, i guess I, it's the same thing right but it, it is yeah because people I, I i want to i want people to slow down and you know maybe slowing down might create more gratefulness just more awareness so um if i can bring some chaos or some clarity not chaos but some clarity to their chaos yeah <laughs> i got chaos going on <laughs> so how like how does the uh do you know how many people are watching it or do you invite people you're Um, no, I haven't yet, but I've started sharing it on our group page as well. So um, so you're, just, you're practicing, just getting into the groove of it. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Sorry. I'm trying to get my phone to, I guess that that's just the way it is going to be. You're looking up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you ever taught mindfulness before? No, no, I've just um, did a course and received like a little cert certificate type of thing and have not taught it before. But um, Christy the other day brought forward that, you know, one, one of my talents may be to organize and to plan out like strategically um you know some marketing stuff so more like mindfulness is, is great because it like i i see myself going out into nature and bringing people on nature trips and nature walks and you know that type of thing not that any of this will bring in income for me i, I don't know how how that would but um, Christy had mentioned about my organization and with marketing and things like that. So laying out a whole year's calendar in a way. And, and that kind of tweaked me. And I said, yeah, you know, well, that's, that's something that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's actually <laughs> perfect from the point of view of uh, the event organizer. Like basically mm -hmm. your one year map is your, is your main map in C. Yeah. What are all the things that are coming? You know, what do I have to plan for? What resources do we need? And, uh, but that's very, that, that seems quite 
a jump away from present moment awareness. So it's it's like if you look at the enneagram between the two and the eight. Okay. At, at eight is the present moment. Like as you do, you, do you understand? There's different time cycles at each one of the numbers. No. Okay, you want to write this one down? I am. Okay, maybe draw an enneagram. Okay. And at one, write yeah. life, write lifetime cycle. At two, write yearly cycle. Oh, okay. At three, write lunar lunar cycle. At four, write daily cycle. At five, write seasonal cycle. At six, write hourly cycle. At seven, write minute cycle. At eight, write present moment. At nine, write timelessness. And in the middle, put all cycles. Okay. Now, imagine that as your base of the Enneagram, the base foundation for everything else that's going to go on top of all the maps and everything you're going to learn. That is the primary map. Okay. Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, give me some feedback as to what that means to you or. Well, um, I see it. So as I look at say nine as being. So yeah, like lots of different things are running through my head. Nine um, is like the peacemaker and that's timeless. Like it's, it goes on forever. Um, one as the reformer, um, a lifetime cycle. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't get that one bit. That'll come. And two is the, is the helper and yeah, like it, they're just, they're there all, all, all the time. Okay. Well, wait, do you have, yeah, the, yeah I don't get it. Do, okay. do you have the flow map there? No. Do you remember the flow map? No. Here's the flow map. Now go through the personality types like you did, but use the word that's on the flow map to bring into the personality type of the Enneagram. So put the three together, go like reformer, lifetime, and then field. Okay, reformer, just wait. Oh, okay, yes, okay, yeah, so. A lifetime cycle, and then it's a reformer and the field. So the field is. Um, What's the reformer doing in relationship to the field? Making sure things are like in place and is um, like seated properly or cultivated properly, you know, if we put it in that context. So um, it's not seated too late. It's watered at the right time. It's everything is like documented just right to a T. Okay. So now put that, look at that in the term of a, in the focus of a whole lifetime, let's say versus in a day or a season or a year, like, we're just, what we're doing is we're layering conceptual levels and I'm just sort of testing you a bit in a sense, but okay, sh yeah. show it, showing how you can bring layers together to start to understand. Because what you have is you have the basis of the Enneagram, you have the nine personality types, you know this, right? Okay, yeah, basic, you've it, that's you've all. Got it, you've got it memorized. And then what I'm coming in is a whole new set of maps 
that mm-hmm. fit that fit on the Enneagram, but are going to sort of like, you're going to have to associate your, what you know with what you don't know. And so what you know is the personality types. And then what right. I just gave you are the time cycles, which for the, for the inflow matrix is actually at the base of the whole thinking system. Now, I don't, you know, the person, the nine personality types don't necessarily fit completely. I didn't use them as the reference point to what I create. Right. Doesn't mean there isn't a connection can be used. It just means that when you bring together conceptual models, sometimes there's a direct correlation and they fit really well together, but sometimes there isn't. It's more of a matrix. And it's just like every one of these fits with every one of these, but there isn't a direct connection. Okay. So what we're doing right now is we're taking the flow wheel, which is the primary reference point in terms of words. Like if you look at the choice wheel, flow wheel, synergy wheel, and harmony wheel, synergy, harmony, and choice wheel all reference back to the flow wheel. So these words are the prime, like if you look at field and you go above, you go research and you go science, science at the harmony wheel, research at the synergy wheel, and then field. But research is referencing field, science is referencing field. And then when you take a choice word, like personality Mm -hmm. or soul or limits or boundaries, it is referencing the field. You see what I mean? Like think about, you've got got four levels. Right. And three of the levels are referencing the second level for meaning. Okay. So, okay. Go back. So it's, we've got field and then we have research, research, and then science. Yeah. So now we're, now that's a vertical. What we're doing is we're going up vertically in abstract leveling, right? Right. From the individual to the group, to the community and having a word at each level that corresponds to the words below it or above it. Okay. This is one of the unique features of the inflow matrix, that there's a vertical integration between the levels of language. I've, I haven't seen that before. No. Okay. And, and I, I think I've got it. So um, you you have the field and then you have, so, okay. I for, always forget the middle one. Science is the top. Research. Research, right. And um yeah, so you're you're researching to what what say best crop to put in your field, and the science um, gives you that feedback or the information. Yeah. Kind of thing, right. Okay. And the thing is, I mean, field can be a physical field, but it's almost like yes. you could have a field conceptually and knowledge. Like science, in a sense, is a field. Uh, biology mm-hmm. is a field. Physics. Is okay, a field. right that way too. Okay. So it's again looking at what is the prime reference point, and then what we're doing is we're giving it a, a time cycle. So for field, we're looking at lifetime. Now field exists at all the other levels, but its primary connection is looking at you as a field. Your field of energy. You have different bodies. Part of your whole thing in your life is you are working with your field potential, right? To actualize your field potential. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get back to the second one. What's the personality type on the Enneagram at two? Um, That's the helper. Okay. So now you've got resources and abundance and you've got yearly. Right. Okay, so now how would they connect? Well, uh, abundance and resources. You want that coming in continually. So um, like the helper helps in whatever form they're helping, whether it's creating or um, you know, bringing people in, they're, they're helping and they're bringing in resources. Oh, no. Was it resources? Yeah. Got to write that down. Resources and abundance. And abundance. So 
the more resource we bring in, the more abundance you will receive. So you need, and that is like the, on a calendar year, yearly. So the more, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right, but, but I, I get your, your concept, right? I mean, you've got, you have to have, say that helper that, you know, say does the work and you need the resources to bring in the abundance on a yearly basis. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at a, a year of events and you're, you've got like four big events and each one of those needs $50,000 to get her going, and then you've got all your minor events, and then you've got new events coming in on your one year planning map. You're basically looking at your resources, right? What you need and what, yes. at, at, at what time. This may be two weeks in advance because we're planning that. So we have to have this. So if you look at the two yeah. eight, and this is where I was bringing in the relationship between two and eight, where eight is in the present moment, mm -hmm. and that's where you're bringing in your mindfulness. That's like now, like wh what am I focused on? Okay. I, I, I have um, I have my computer. I have my cup of tea. I'm I talk to you, uh, you know, through Zoom. I'm using these resources in the present moment. Okay. Right. So that two eight. Yeah. What happens with the enneagram is the two. From the eight, you can look back at the two and go like, what is necessary? What is available? You know, what do we need here? And from the two to the eight, you're look, you're looking at the present moment, and you're let's say the accountant is going, okay, well. Friday, we need 10,000 bucks. I mean, the next week we need $3,000. So that mm -hmm. two late relationship is making sure that you have available in the present moment what you need. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yeah, okay. So if you have somebody who's uh, like an, at eight, eight is marketing, eight is right. strat strategies, eight is politics. So politics is basically the system's relationship with the outer world, right? It's how you're maneuvering in the pre you know, in the present moment, you're always maneuvering depending upon what's occurring because the context what's happening. is shifting. And so marketing is essentially all of your strategies that you have to bring customers in or to bring allies in or to bring resources in basically, right? Like the marketer goes out, says, okay, we need like, you, the, the person at two goes, we need $50,000 in sales. The marketer goes out and does it and then right. and brings it. They don't want to touch it. Once they've done it, they're on to the next thing, but they bring that to the person at two. They bring in their resource. Yes. Through right. yeah. strategy. So the word, what's, what's the uh, personality profile at eight? Um, well, it'll come to me. Oh, I have to go get the map. Okay, you want to go get the map? Yeah. Okay. Okay, eight. eight is the challenger. Okay. So now look at the challenger and look at strategies and look at the present moment and how do they connect together? Okay, well... The, the challenger in eight is going to probably like challenge the marketing to make sure what is happening is working. Um, they're going to pro probably challenge all of this. Um, they're going to look at the strategic planning and, you know, question and things like that. And going out to the world with politics, again, they will question on, like, you know, say the strategy and the process and getting people outside their, their box. Excellent. That's what I see a challenger doing. Yeah. And I think what I see with challengers or eights is they generally, if there's, you know, room of people, something's wrong, they're the people who stand up. They're the people who yes. say something. So they've got a lot of boldness. They have a lot of courage and they can make things happen. 
They can really go out there and uh, they're not afraid of speaking out. So from a point of view of marketing, uh, an aide is usually a very good marketer. Mm -hmm. Right. They're very smart in terms of how to use their time to get the most results, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So we've got eight, one, and two. Let's move down to three. And what's, what's the personality profile at three? Is achiever. Okay. And here we have the lunar cycle and we have job and mission. Job, mission. So how would, how would that relate, you think? Okay. Well, um, so the lunar cycle is like every month, you know, it's a, right? Is that, is that what we're talking? Like the full moon, new moon, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. So it's repetitive. Okay. Um, the, the achiever would want to see goals obtained, I guess, and would want to see. Okay. And so a job and mission. So a mission would be um, great for the achiever because that gives them a target and something to go to say, this is our mission. This is what we want to put out there and job. I'm not sure how that fits in there. Well, the job, like the primary triad is, is the job, the relationship and the agreement job at three relationship at six and nine is agreement. So if you look at any business, that's the basis for every business with five at products being what you're producing. So the business is made up of jobs. You have relationships that you create agreements with, and that's the basis of any business, right? So we're looking at structure words that can organize everything and anything in a business. All the words on the flow wheel are structure words, meaning there's, okay. lots, there's lots of different types of activities. There's lots of different resources. There's lots of different products. These are very simple words that kind of are a little bit uh, deceptive in terms of their power to organize so many other words. What we're looking at here on the flow wheel is, is all of these words can basically design any job. There's always um, strategies. There's all, you're always going down a path. You are always have relationships. You always are creating some sort of product. You're always using your gifts. You are having activity, you're doing actions where you're getting reactions. You're in a job carrying out certain missions and there are resources that you use and within a field based upon the agreements you make you know all of these words that's awesome they're working together but the content what you are going to do like this morning you did a mindfulness meditation at mm -hmm. operations at four at activities that would be one of the things you are doing but in the present eight. moment at eight your strategy is bringing forth a, a video into the world to start to attract customers or allies or members into the visionary hub, right? That's correct, yes. So you're using the resources again of your computer or your phone and you're using the internet to deliver this message. So uh, as you're speaking, you're going down a path, uh, a conversational path where words are coming out and you're creating relationship with the people out there, right? Like, I mean, again, you can look at any sort of instance and bring all these words in and these words exist. But what we've done wow. here is we're giving each time cycle one of the words or two of the words to actually sort of create a database or to give a focal point for the mind to bring these words together, but all from different time perspectives. So if you're looking at your job, you're looking mm -hmm. at a lunar cycle, which is you know, you're planning it, you, you know, you're, you're looking, you're not looking at every day, the same as operations activities, where you're just looking at what are the actions I'm doing on a daily basis. From a job point of view, you're doing multiple actions over time. So you have to schedule and plan that from a lunar point of view. But you want to create like a, a cycle, a pulse of 13 lunar cycles, you get into this rhythm of going, okay, I, I deliver one workshop each lunar cycle. Oh, I, I deliver, you know, 10 one-on-one -on -one consultations. Oh, I deliver, you know, four group sessions over a period of 28 days. But okay. then I repeat that. Then I repeat that. So you're mastering 
the sequence that is designed by you to be your ideal job, right? Okay, so, yes. So how you schedule your time, what type of clients you have, how much money you make, all of these things you are going to design, put down on paper as your ideal, and then you do your marketing and all your other work to create that ideal in the world, right? Hey. So, so if you have this map, specifically says you know i'm making you know how much money do you want to make a month oh uh, we'll start with five grand okay so you're aiming at five grand and how many hours a week do you want to work oh okay um good question so hours a week i would say six hours a day so 30 hours most. a week so 30 yeah. hours a week Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then how many of those hours are being paid versus how many hours are not paid? Oh, okay. Um, so six hours a week. Two to three hours would be, a, a day would be paid hours. Okay. Because, I mean, if you're making $100 an hour at 50 hours, so if you do 50 hours a month, that's 61, so 50 out of 120 hours are paid by, if you just use okay. the formula. So, so just make sure you note that down, like 50 hours are paid and 70 are unpaid. So when you chart out, I want to see, like one of your takeaways today is yeah. you're going to chart out your ideal month. You're, you're going to get four um. weeks, weeks and you're going to chart out and you're going to use, do you remember the, uh, the uh, five spaces map? Um, do, do you have that? Like the, this one? Yeah. Okay. So have you filled that out? You did. No. Didn't you fill it out during the course? Like during the what? Didn't, didn't we do, uh, didn't when I was doing teaching the four of you, didn't we do the five communications? Spaces? We probably yeah. do. So I probably have that in a different folder. Okay. So that's why we didn't do that. Cause I thought we've already done that. Um, go to that folder if not now, afterwards, and just that's okay. an important map to bring out. So I'm just assuming that you've already done that map, okay? Right. So okay. then what I want you to do is there's, I want you to use those five spaces. So mm -hmm. you've got like four weeks, so it's different week in each. Uh, okay, yeah. And I want you to, de to design your time in terms of the 50 hours you're paid and like, figure out, okay, how many of these are paid are group hours and how many of these are one-on-one, -on -one, how many of these are personal oh. and how many of these are community space. Oh, okay. okay. So this is the beginning of going, okay, well, I want to, let's say, lead uh, one hump factor per week, let's say, of 10 people of at $10 an hour, or let's say an hour with 10 people at $20 an hour, so that's 200 an hour, and then you can give, let's say, uh, 100 to the hub and 100 to you kind of thing. Right. Let's just say. And so let's say you do one of those a week. Right. That would be an example of a group space. Okay. Where you're making 100 an hour. And then you may go, okay, I'm, I'm giving six one-on-one -on -one cons consultations or I'm doing coaching at $100 each. Do you understand? So, okay. and then yeah. community space, maybe I'm... I'm hosting a, a, a community space mindfulness meditation with 20 people at $5 each. Right. And that could be once or twice a week, kind of, you know, so figure out the, the type of space, how much money and how it's divided. For, uh, so it, you, you can make more than a hundred, but you always have to have a minimum of a hundred and, and, and factor in whatever percentage is going to go to the visionary hub. Okay, 
So, so that's, that's, your, that's your homework community. until our next session. And then let's get back to, I want to finish off this. I just wanted to make sure we got that done because that's a biggie. Yes. And so we're at number three. So you understand it's lunar achiever and mission and job. Let's go to four. Uh, which, which one is the. Any? Four is um, individualist. Okay. So then we're looking at individualist in a daily cycle and activities and reactions. So that's awesome. So even just what you um, went through just now with the five um, spaces, like for me, I, uh, I would see breaking down that like daily and like weekly and then daily and then hourly almost. So I, I really like that one. And because we are all individualist, um, we do need to kind of map out our stuff together yet um, be respectful of our own individual things that we want to achieve and do. Okay, so that's okay. registering in. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the next one at five, where we have seasonal and products and gifts. Gifts, okay. Okay, and that's investigator. So um, when I see seasonal, so when, when I look into, say, like a, a planning strategic planning, say for marketing or whatever, um, I would look into what the seasons are and what is happening, you know, whether it's a winter solstice or um, I, I would see what happens during the season. So spring is new growth and summer is, you know, all, all the bright and light and things. And then product and gifts. So I would try to um, coordinate my products, say my mindfulness in regards to um, like the season. Okay. So right now I, I see like spring coming. And so I would start planning, um, you know, my nature walks and getting that all into the calendar and and doing that gifts. Um, I think we all have gifts that we can offer, but it's also, also, I also see it as two different things. So our personal gifts that we can give to the community and to um, the world, but also gifts as product. So we have gifts of material gifts. So like selling, say our our value cards and our mapping cards or gifts or you know giving away and and prizes and in you know getting people engaged that way so i see it in two different ways mm. and um product yeah is what we each have to put out to the world and then for myself as an individualist um some seasonal stuff for me is, you know, different mindfulness at different times or different, different things. Excellent. Uh, I would add in terms of the gifts, it's sort of like the gifts of each individual. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the gene keys yet, but the, the sort of like, it's the expression of your gifts. So it's kind of like looking at your internal talents and natural gifts as being the center point and that's the shift in the old to the new paradigm where products is the center point in the old paradigm and the internal gifts of the human is the center point. Oh, like, that's awesome. Because you want to design your ideal job based upon your gifts. So like, what are you really good at doing? What do you love to doing? That's going to be the center point of, of how we go deeper into this model. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then, I like that. And you're looking at it from the point of view of the whole season where, you know, wintertime, you're going to be doing different things in the summertime, obviously, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, people have always used the seasons, you know, to really coordinate over a longer period of time what they're going to do for that year. 
So we're looking at the year for the resources of what you need, but then you look at the seasons to go, okay, well, what products am I going to create? So that two and, and five connection to eight, where you're looking at eight is how you're bringing it into the world. Two mm -hmm. is where you're getting all the stuff you need. And then five is what you're building. And then you're going to bring that through seven as your service because your seven is your minute to minute direct connection to your customer. So, uh, okay. So you're looking at, you know, the programs of the visionary hub. You're looking at, okay, in which season are we offering what? Because that's very important as your container. Mm -hmm. And then at the, the line from five to seven is that line, okay, here's our products, here's our programs. But at seven is the direct implementation of the program or service. So like the hub factor, which you just did, you, know, right. you, have, you have a program where you're doing like every Tuesday, for 12 weeks, you, you have a, a, a 10 o'clock coffee service where you're creating this hub factor. And then at seven is the direct implementation of it, right? Because that's, if you go to seven, that's minute to minute. So right. the, the thing is about the correlation of the time cycles is like right now, we're in a one hour session, right? So right. hour is at relationships. Hour is at the next relationships and bonds six. Oh, okay yeah so that's one hour so that's hourly so what's what's the uh the enneagram profile at hour i mean at uh, six six um loyalist okay so you're looking at the six and the relationships and bonds in an hourly uh, uh session or Factor, cycle. yeah and then connected to the loyalist. How do you see those three connecting together? Okay. Um, so loyalist is very loyal, say to the system and to, and to um, relationships. And it was what? Relationships and? Bonds. Bonds, okay. Can't read my writing, okay. So loyalists, I think, creates bonds to a lot of, to their relationships. And when they create a relationship, a relationship they're very um, solid, they're, they're bonded, and they're loyal, as the six says. And hourly, um, I, I guess... I, I would put out there that you were always looking to connect and maybe create. When you're creating a, a relationship, you do want to have that bond and and the low and to be in loyal. So when you're say in an hourly meeting or an hourly time frame. You're making that connection with people and you're maybe not creating a bond yet, but you're making a connection to build a relationship as well. For sure. And you see like the idea of the relationship for an hour, it's like we have an hour now and then you may have right. a meeting with your team and then you may go talk to a supplier. Then you may spend some time. Like if you look during the day, you're moving throughout the day in terms of all your different relationships. Now they all may not necessarily take an hour, but it's, right. it's, it's like we're paid by the hour. And it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's basically like, if you look at the three as your lunar, so you're looking at your whole lunar job and you're basically mm -hmm. creating relationships in the different spaces. So if you're creating at, in the lunar uh, 10 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, each one of those sessions is an hour with a relationship. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you're moving from the lunar to the hour and between these two things, you can basically organize almost everything. So your jobs and your relationships oh my God. are the key to sort of conceptually making sure that your mind is going, okay, I understand. Okay. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Oh my God. I, I need more information. I, I need your maps because you go from eight to two to well this is just yeah. we're layering right we're like just it, going 
around. I, I, yes, we, we can't we can't sort of chew on the elephant of all at once. Which I know. I so as but you're seeing it like each one of these has a different time map. Yeah. Which you can then see, okay, that fits with that, that fits with that, that fits with that. So the next time I'll give you the, the breakdowns because you're looking at the point of view, you need a year map and then you need these lunar maps, then you need mm -hmm. the week map and you need the day map and then you need the hour map. Yes. And, and so then you can really identify the sequence of what is occurring in a way that, you know, cyclically is very different from Makes. Like linear time. Yeah. Makes and then, sense. And then the four of you are using it again to create the same reference point in your mind and you're, you'll see that the, the amount of synchronicity and the amount of uh, telepathy is going to increase because you're creating the same neural links that match i think universal law love it yeah okay let's go to number seven kate number seven is the enthusiast and we have so it's minute to minute and paths and uh, blocks oh so, okay why did I write service and programs? Service is, uh, well, it's true at, at Synergy, at the next level up, it's services. Oh, okay. Okay, but um, so this one is paths. And minute to minute. Minute to minute, right. So you're physically going down a path, you know, you're walking. You know, yeah. Like this room, I go, you know, you're always on this path, but then mentally, if you, you and I have been in a conversation and we are going down a path too, like the words are a certain pathway that goes back and forth. So you can think of it mentally or you can think of physically. Okay. And, yeah. it's, and it's minute to minute, right? Like as we're in this hour, we're having a session and now we're proceeding within that hour, minute to minute down a path where, I mean, I'm taking you around the Enneagram. I'm connecting the time cycles with the flow wheel, with what you already know which is the Enneagram personality profiles. And so the, the memory works through association and you've already got the, the, the memorized version of the personality profiles yes. we're layering on the time cycle. And then we're layering on the flow wheel. Love it. Yes. So, yeah. so give me a little rundown on the enthusiast and minute to minute and paths. How does enthusiast that sense. All right. Well, the enthusiast, as we know, has um, ongoing ener energy like the Energizer um, bunny. And um, the, the path for an enthusiast, I think, is really hard to follow. <laughs> but um, it seems they always come back to that path and... I, I think for the path and for, you know, this whole thing, it, it's really good to, well, maybe not really good, but I, I can see breaking it down minute to minute. So if you're in an hour meeting, you know, things aren't wasted and it's just so clearly documented what happens from one minute to another minute. And it leads to a, a certain a certain path. Um, yeah, more insight. Well, I think also the enthusiast is very enthused about the path they're on. They may jump around. Yes. Path, okay. But they're very uh, psyched, and they bring a lot of motivation because mm -hmm. I think they're a lot present in the moment. They're very excited, right, about whatever's occurring. But again, you're right. right. They, they may not even know they're on a path or not. They're oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go to number eight. Oh, number we did, eight. We did, no, we did number eight. We uh, did. Yeah. Let's go to number nine. Uh, okay. What's that? The mediator. Um, peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah. And then we're timeless and direction and agreements. Direction. agreements okay so um yeah i think we we just did i touched on that briefly but um the peacemaker i think is always looking for to keep things in a nice even flow and they don't see an end to it so 
that's where the timelessness comes in. Like a lot of these have like have a, a time frame. So, you know, a season, okay, we know what's this, this, this long, an hour is that um, daily, right? 24 hours. And like a lot of these arms are, are have like a, a time thing where a peacemaker and that type of thing uh, I, is not timeless. So it, it's something that they go on. They always want direction. Um, it probably helps with direction to keep, to have, to have focus and agreements is what is, I guess, agreed upon. So, um, you know, if we go into one, like a, or no, let's go into two. So like a yearly cycle. So if we're, if we're building that yearly calendar, um, we want agreement on the things that we put on that calendar and also the agreement that things can change if need be. So yeah, just agreement, just to all be on one, um, one plane and yeah, get along. I don't know. <laughs> so can you see the map behind me yeah yes okay so the map on the right is the enneagram but it has the nine time cycles and the map on the left is the time translator which are the time types which have the nine time cycles so both of these are the same map in a sense from different perspectives cool so if you look at the the map here the yeah. purple the purple is lifetime the blue is yearly the aquamarine is is lunar and the green is daily so those four oh, go wow. over here where you have lifetime yearly okay yeah lunar and daily then if you look at the yellow because it's color coded the yellow is here at seasonal at 5 that's yeah. the reference point of it's a weird it's not following the right time sequence but that's where the person stands in a sense you're standing in your gifts. You're standing at five, and then you've got your your long term planning here. I mean, over there, and then you got your yeah. short, short term here, where you've got your hour, your minute, your present moment, and your timelessness. Right. Right. So here, you've got your pink is your hour, the minute is orange, the red is present moment, and then the magneta is timelessness. Right. So okay. that's. The beginning of looking at maps of being the same thing but in a, in a different type of infographic okay yeah does that make sense yeah yeah i i like um the one on your right my left mm. yeah very nice i like that so both these are tables so this is another table you can sit at and you'd have the enneagram on it and so when you're sitting there, you can, you're seeing whatever you're talking about from the perspective that you're sitting at. So if you're sitting at the two, you're, you're seeing it from a year point of view, but if you're sitting it from the eight, you're looking at the present moment. So the marketer is very different from the accountant. Like they just see things differently. Right. In normal organizational infrastructures, they don't distinguish these different time cycles. Like they'll have no. marketing, finance, <clears throat> you know, operations, you know, product development, but it's all the same kind of time. Yes. So what this yeah. is doing is looking, well, if you're in product development, it's more from a seasonal point of view. If you're in finance, it's more of a, a yearly point of view. And if you're looking at marketing, it's more present moment. So, you, so you're bringing in a more dynamic viewpoint of how to use time. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. You know, when you look at it, that um that way that's incredible like it, it it makes a lot more sense it's more clear i know it's still a lot that i need to like i'll probably go go after we're done here i'll recreate my notes and stuff like that but yeah awesome so yeah. this is I have a this, better picture this is very uh this is the first time i've ever 
really describe this in this way, like to take something you already know and then connect it to two levels. So I, I really want to thank you uh, that you did very well in terms because that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of information coming in at once. It is, yes, but um, it really did give me a better, like a, a real connection on the different levels. So yeah, I, you know, bringing in the um, the Enneagram and your flow map. And then I see the synergy and then I see the harmony and how that all, yeah, works together. So that's really like, cool. It's, it's like when you're multidimensional thinking in a sense, like you can take those nine, the map of the nine personality types and that you could actually put them at three at jobs and go, okay, well, here's the jobs, but then we're gonna organize it through the personality types. Okay, yeah. Right, so that's one way of connecting. Okay, here's a map here. You put another map here. And that's different from like, if we were looking at resources, if we go through the two, we go mm -hmm. to the next level and we organize resources by the personality types. Or okay. we go through three and we organize jobs by the personality types. Or we go to six and go through relationships and organize by the personality types. So it's kind of like it's, it's looking at file folders and you're creating a file folder system and just like uh, hyperlinking, you, you go through that one, you go to the next level and it's a fractal. You've got this Enneagram and the mind loves order. So yes. when, you, when you start, if you look at the Enneagram and then you go through every number and, the, and you go to another Enneagram, you can now organize 81 other maps underneath it or i mean nine other maps and then another yeah. nine other maps so when you start to think or organize in fractals it's it's a new way for the mind to think it is like totally like wow so i, I hope i'm not blowing your mind but it, it, it's like once <laughs> you, you are begin, blowing my mind <laughs> once you begin to memorize the maps and then okay. put them together it's like the, then you can create matrices you can create possibilities it, it's oh just God. a matter of of once you've got again once you've got the first interfaces memorized and i go synergy wheel you immediately have okay well that's re research infrastructure learning operations creativity synergy services marketing and stewardship so you immediately have that and then i go well if you're going down a path on the flow wheel you go down the flow through services so now you're going kind of like on two levels, but it's just because mm -hmm. you've got the maps memorized. Right. So we're creating a navigation system that is universal for any organization and any job. So at some point you can go to any business and you've already got a full thinking system and you can look mm -hmm. at the business and go, well, how do you organize your resources? You know, what kind of products you have and like, what are your jobs and what kind of agreements do you have? And you immediately have this cognitive map of their whole idea, and then you can just take their information and fit it in where it fits. And so your knowledge mm -hmm. castle or your construct gets smarter and smarter over time because you've always got the same reference point for how to bring these things together. And then you, mm -hmm. and then you, uh, another thing you can do is go to your computer mm -hmm. and you know, on your bar at the top, you can create file folders. Yeah go like visionary hub and then put synergy wheel, put like visionary hub at the top yeah. and, and then go 3.0 communication, 3.1 research, 3.2 okay. infrastructure and create 10 file folders. And that's the beginning of your online URLs being organized by the inflow matrix. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and that's something once you do it, show the other three ladies how to do that. Okay. You've got this recorded, so you'll send this to me, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to, um, I'll, I'll take those notes and yeah, I'll do that. Oh my God. That's awesome. That will really help me become more aware of where yeah things go. Any questions? Awesome. I mean, we're just in the last few minutes. Um, Are we? Okay. Anything you want to? No. Um, I'm going to 
sit back and just absorb what we spoke about. And I want to recreate what we spoke about in a bit more um, easier thing for me because I just made a lot of notes. And I will find my map. And if I haven't done, done this, I, I will do that. Okay. okay. So no, awesome. Oh, I do have a question. What's the best email to send you some, some money? Uh, Elijah Ignatieff, E-L-I-J-A-H-I-G-N-A-T-I-E-F-F -F at Gmail. Okay. So probably just that email that we've been using. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll send that to you today. Okay, great. 400, right? Yeah. Okay. So our next session, do we set a day same, and time for that? Same, you want to do same time next week? Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a wonderful oh. session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have a great Talk day. Talk to you later. Thanks. Okay. You too.